Hello dear viewers welcome to the second episode of Sunday snippets it is i your host ananya manvi and so we all know that one song from the little mermaid right where sebastian that one lobster with an amazing jamaican accent is singing about how life is great under the sea yeah about that life is not great under the sea anymore why 90% of coral reefs are predicted to go extinct in in about by 2030 Because of all the activities that human beings do, you know, I personally don't know anything about coral reefs. Other than that, I really don't know anything that they have it have it a lot of marine life. But Thought Seal has found this one person who has a vast sea like get it knowledge about coral reefs, and boy, are we lucky to have him! So please welcome our today's guest, marine biologist Dr. Vardhan Patan, a PhD. Dr. Patan, we are honored to have you on our little talk show today. Uh, be- before we begin our show. can there's a question i'd like to ask you see marine biology is not a subject that many people pick up to study but you know it's pretty interesting so what inspired you to pick up marine biology to you know major in it and study it thank you for that uh, wonderful introduction and now uh, the song uh, which is really nice um, so uh, what inspired is of course my love to the towards the sea so i've been sea swimmer from very young age i used to take part in sea swimming competitions and i used to take in competitive swimming uh, take part in uh, many competitions and that's how uh, at a very uh, young age i got to i decided that i want to study uh, marine life and uh, my father is a mariner so i uh, take part in uh, many competitions and that's how uh, at a very uh, young age i got to i decided that i want to study uh, marine life and uh, my father is a mariner so uh, I, on many trips i would go with him i would accompany him, uh, uh, with him and uh, uh, i got exposure and i think uh, uh, the greatest thing you can give to ch- uh, children is exposure so i was uh, fortunate and privileged uh, fortunate enough and pri- it was my privilege that i got to see the sea and marine life very closely at a young age uh, and uh, Uh, after my during my bachelor's, I decided that I will uh, continue uh, marine biology. Uh, of course, I had inclination towards other subjects as well, but the uh, marine life is something fascinated me because of colors, because of uh, all the beauty that lies uh, underneath. So oh, that that's really fascinating, actually. Uh, uh, I heard that you also have a blog online that you know on starfishes. I've read it. It's really uh, viewers, please do read his blog. It's absolutely amazing, and it's very informative as well. Now, without further ado, let's begin with our first question: um, What are coral reefs exactly? Uh, again, interesting question. So, for listeners who are not familiar with what corals are, corals are animals uh, similar to jellyfish, uh, and they belong to the phylum Anthozoa class. Need area? Forget the terms, but essentially, they are uh, animals, uh, and within corals. Uh, there are two types of corals. There are homotopic corals, or what we call, uh, as researchers, homotopic corals. But they are reef-building corals, and then there are non-reef-building corals, which don't form calcium carbonate structure. And the most important part of coral is a cup-shaped structure, which is called as uh, a coralite. And within that, there are polyps. Uh, and within polyps, there is there are there are microscopic algae. Uh, that lives inside which is called as zooxanthellae and uh, there is a symbiotic relationship and symbiotic relationship is a, a term used for when uh, both parties uh, benefit and there is a symbiotic uh, relationship between this algae uh, which is a plant and coral which is an uh, animal and uh, how it works is that algae gets nutrient and a safe place to grow whereas corals uh, get oxygen and help with waste removal This is how algae helps. So this is how this symbiotic relationship works. Uh, there are many forms of corals. Uh, what you see, there are branching corals, there are plate and foliage corals, there are massive, submassive coral type of corals, which are the um, their morphology. Or this is how they look. Uh, overall, corals are in India. Corals are found in Gulf of Manar, Gulf of Kutch, Andaman Nicobar Islands, um, and Lakshadweep Islands. Uh, and along the west coast of india we have few coral patches in malwad in angria bank there is spectacular coral reef and uh, we have uh, beautiful coral reefs in at netrani islands in karnataka 
Oh. I am really fascinated with coral reefs because you see, I have only seen them at TV. So I just really that's one of my on my bucket list that I want to see coral reefs. So this brings us to our next question: uh, How are coral reefs formed? Are they you know do they grow like little saplings or anything of that sort, or how how do they grow actually? So it's, again, it's a very interesting question: how they grow, uh, and I'm sure you will have studied in your school. So, but the corals uh, uh, historically they are very old. One of their oldest uh, form uh, to come in life, uh, to come in place. Uh, so they are the way they grow is uh, they need any hard substratum, which means that anything it could be rock, it could be tiles, it could be uh, just a barren surface. If there is any hard substratum, uh, the coral larvae can go and attach to themselves. Uh, Corals are almost 560 million years ago. That's when they evolved. Uh, we have different types of corals. We have different types of. Um, uh, in India, we have almost 450 species. Each species are very uh, are very different. And the way they form is that they have uh, they they have a very interesting way of uh, reproduction. They have sexual reproduction. They have asexual reproduction. Uh, they have budding. So only even if the branch is uh, branch is uh, falls off, even that can grow up, uh, on its own as a coral. And the way we as uh, you know, city dwellers, the way we live uh, in apartments, similarly even corals uh, they have a sort of a structure which is uh, uh, which is uh, encompassing and it's, we call it structural rugosity. So uh, every coral. Uh, is a small polyp which is an individual, and what you see as a structure, if you see a brain coral, it's a colony of uh, many individual, which is which is makes which is what makes it as a coral reef. Uh, and the way they form is that they after um, uh, uh, their uh, once the gametes are released in the water column, uh, the corals uh, larvae float in the water for approximately 24 hours to 48 hours. They move with the current, and whenever they form suitable uh, substrate, the coral larvae get attached uh, to the substratum, and then uh, with the photosynthesis, which is the algae that zooxanthellae that lives inside, they capture sunlight, and then they start forming calcium carbonate structure, just like our calcium carbonate, and then they start yes. slowly growing. Yeah, that's how yes. the reefs are formed. That's amazing. And uh, next question: How how are they important to the ecosystem? Because you see, I only know that they habit a lot of marine life. But how are they important to us also? Uh, as in, what benefits do corals give us? Corals give us. So, uh, uh, so coral reefs are they are considered as canaries of climate change. Uh, and uh, why they are important? Because uh, uh, it's they are the oceans are the largest largest carbon sinks. And today we are driving our SUVs and uh, driving all kinds of uh, vehicles and uh, releasing so much carbon monoxide. And ocean acts a huge source of uh, absorbing carbon. Uh, coral reefs, as I mentioned, that their structure is made up of calcium carbon, and it's a uh, because of that uh, they play a tremendous role in absorbing carbon. That is one. Second, uh, uh, the way we live in apartment, even corals. Have a structure, and within that there is a lot of uh, space for many reef associates such as crabs, sea stars. Uh, then we have uh, all kinds of polychaetes, all kinds of worms, and most importantly, which we all love, fish. So all fish lives. Uh, so it provides a great source and a hiding spaces through, uh, in crevices of corals, and uh, uh, because it's an, an entire ecosystem in itself. Where there are many species, there are approximately 2,000 species that are recorded in India of reef fish, uh, and all these fish are they live uh, in coral or uh, in the within coral reef ecosystem, and that is a major source because uh, it so provides as a uh, uh, as a insurance uh, against climate change. So that's also another four things that uh, uh, coral reefs are sort of indicators, and they produce. Uh, uh, Lots of uh, overall the structure, which is very important. So these are few things how that how are uh, coral reefs being important. preserved? You know, by the government, and also how can we help to preserve them? Is there a way? So, yeah. So I I would I would use the word conserve rather than preserve because uh, uh, it's a, it's a it's a 
uh, it's an ecosystem and what we what is being done so in india we have various laws and as country we love making laws but whether we follow or not it's a different question so we have uh, indian wildlife protection act of 1972 under which all corals uh, and all gorgonias which is sea fans all sea uh, 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 all sea cucumbers and many other species so there are almost 800 species seven species which are protected under the indian wildlife protection act and especially corals they are protected and uh, they have given highest level of legal protection which means if you collect a coral if you collect a protected species then the punishment is as stringent as collecting a tiger skin and that, that's what the legal status of coral is so you when you go to the beach you cannot 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 collect even small piece and you can, it is an offense and it uh, it will uh, uh, attract punishment of 20 uh, punishment and the fine up to, up to uh, 25000 and the uh, imprisonment up to 2 years uh, this is kind of protection legal protection is uh, given uh, besides we have other regulations in place such as we have marine protected area and just like in on land we have sanctuaries we have national parks we have marine protected areas where important areas such as in andaman there is mahatma gandhi marine national park there is rani jasi marine national park so these are the areas where there are beautiful coral reef and these areas are protected by law where no fishing no extraction no human activities allowed and essentially coral reef ecosystem or even forest ecosystem or any ecosystem does not need protection or conservation or preservation what we need to do is we need to manage people because currently the major threats to any or any or all these ecosystem is from us as humans so we need to really manage people how we how they use their resources so perhaps uh, the way uh, india is uh, committed to create more and more marine protected area right now our marine protected areas which is uh, just like terrestrial protected areas we have approximately 1.6 uh, percent of our waters that is protected and we are planning to protect 10 percent of our area as protection and these are the th- few activities or few uh, steps that government of india has taken to protect the coral reef but besides that there are many small groups there are ngos there are individual like me uh, who are interested and passionate and who are driving and who are striving to conserve marine life and uh, coral reefs right that, that's that's really good to hear because you see all day we hear these depressing news about it. also a little surprise question how did you feel about this interview did you feel nice that you know people are interested in coral reefs i am uh, uh, when i got to know from you and i got to know that you as a youth you guys are interested in uh, 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 having the, the impact in dedicating the entire month for uh, um, towards ocean and marine life as very happy and it's really heartening to hear that because i think it's uh, it's need of year uh, and um, uh, uh, because uh, youngsters are future and because uh, we need more and more we need more manpower we need more people and what is uh, really happening uh, today is this lack of awareness because we live in this very concrete uh, jungle where uh, we don't interact with our environment and with our surroundings and uh, that is happening not only here across the globe so uh, uh, i'm very happy that you guys are have taken initiative to uh, approach people like me and uh, dedicate this month for uh, ocean uh, i'm really happy and i hope that uh, in future some of you can become a marine biologist like me or uh, can contribute towards conservation yes, uh, thank you so much it was amazing to hear from you that is it for today i wish i could talk more but no time constraints so thank you so much viewers for tuning in with us uh, please make sure to like and share this video and let's be real you were really interested with this video so you clicked on it right so if you want to see more content like this follow us on our instagram and twitter page and we'll see you next we'll see you next time thank you very much